Good afternoon, pilot teachers, and good afternoon, students. Okay, thank you. Sit down. Our lesson in um, geography will still see us look at um, some more skills in map reading. And one of those important skills that we are going to move to now looking at today is that of interpreting what we call contours. So our lesson will be based mainly on interpreting contours on topographic maps. The atlases that we have been using, you would have found that most of them, they contain mainly information about the countries, maybe um, towns, provinces. It might contain the country's inf information on population and etc. But for contours, you will find that most contours are actually shown on what we call topographic maps. So in front of you, you should have access or copy to what a topographic map would look like. And we're going to look at interpreting contours today in our lesson. So we look at a definition to what contours are, and then from here, we'll move on to looking at some exercise that will enable you to be able to interpret contours correctly. Looking at the definition on our chart, or we can also refer to the monitor on what contours are. Contours are simply lines on a map that joins points of the equal height or points of equal height above sea level. So if we're looking at trying to work out the height above sea level and we want to work out all the area and their height, instead of using a map where we construct and then when you open your atlases, you will um, see a big bulge because that is showing the height, it makes the atlases or maps become very um, inconvenient to actually carry around. So to make it more convenient, contours are then used. And in that way, instead of having a bulge in your atlases or maps when you carry around, there are thin brown lines which shows the height of a place as shown on your maps. So when we look at the definition again to what contours are, they are simply lines on a map that joins places with the same height above sea level. Contours are most used and most um, a most useful method of showing the height of the land on maps. Beside the height of the land being shown by contours, contours can also show us what we call the relief. And when we talk about the relief, that is basically the difference in height of the land. And contours can also show us what we call landforms. And in landform, it is simply the difference in the slope and the shape of the land. We are going to concentrate mainly on interpreting heights, first of all, and then in our next lesson, we will look at how we can identify the different contour patterns to know what type of feature it would be in reality, and that is looking at the slope, and as well as that the shape of the land. And later on also, once we get to be able to identify and interpret contours correctly, then we can also look at calculation of gradients using contours, because when we calculate gradients, we look at the steepness of the slope. But that will come later on. So you see, for contours, when we are looking at contours, it can show us three things. And the three things are height, relief, and landform. Now looking at interpreting contours. On the chart here, when we look at interpreting contours, it is important for us to know that the contours, when they are given, they are thin brown lines you will find on your maps, topographic maps, that is. You will also note that for each of those contour lines, there are values or numbers put next to them or on those lines given. Those numbers, they indicate the height of the land. And usually, the height of the land is given in meters. For all our work on contours, the height will be always in meters. So if you look at the information on the chart here, you can see circular lines, which joins up places of the same height. They are referred to as contours. And those lines have values or numbers on them. And those numbers, they represent the height of the land. Another important thing that we need to also know about contours. Any place on a contour line 
anywhere around or any two places or any three places on the same contour line right around, they have the same value or they have the same height above sea level. So we take, for example, place X and place Y. If you look at them, both of those sit on the same contour line. Therefore, both of them have the same value. Even if maybe place X is here and we put maybe place A on the other side, for as long as it sits on the same contour line, it will have the same value. So any places, two places on the same contours are at the same height above sea level. Another important point to remember about contours, any place that falls halfway between two contours, if you find that a place, say for example like W, it does not sit on this contour line here or that one, but rather it falls in between two contours, will have a height about halfway between the height of the contours above and below it. So if you have this place here, W, to find the contour value of this area here or place W, we must know the height below it and we must know the height above it and we can work out what the value of this place W will be. That's point number three. Point number four, if we want to find the height of a contour and Say, for example, if I put a letter here, maybe say letter C, and if you look at where C might be placed, there is no value on it. And if you want to find the value of letter C, there are two things you can do. Number one, you follow that contour line all the way around until you come to a value or number. And when you follow this contour all the way around, if I decided to go this way, then that means I will have to go all the way around. There is no number until I come here. And there is a value there. And that tells me that is the height of this place. But if you look at the points, the points might not be placed where the numbers are. And that doesn't mean that there is no value for that contour. No, there will always be a value. And if the value is not given here, you need, what you need to do is then to follow the line all the way around until you come to the value. Then you know the value of this particular contour. That's the first thing that you could do if you wanted to find the height or the value of the contour and it's not given there, right there and then. Or what you could also do is that you find the value of the contour which is above this particular contour here and you find the value of the contour which is below it. Say for example, if the value was here, say you're looking for the value of this contour here, you follow the line right around, and then what do you end up with? Nothing. But that doesn't mean that this particular line or contour does not have a value. It does have a value. What you need to do is you check the contour above it, and you check the contour below it, and you can work out what the value of this contour is going to be. For a map similar to what I have on the board, that is very easy because it is straightforward. But when you look at reality, you can tend to um, the map of Sogeri on the contour, a guide to map reading in Papua New Guinea. You do that quickly. Map of Sogeri, which is a topographic map, on page 8. Okay, can you see the map of Sogeri? It's the one which has the green shadings and the brown thin lines and the red colors. Okay, that is an example of a topographic map. What I have given you here is very simple. And if you have been asked to actually identify or interpret contours using maps of such, knowing what to do should make it easier for you to interpret the information on contour maps or topographic maps. Okay, we move on. 
Another important thing you need to remember, the difference, the difference in heights between contours will always be constant. Say, for example, I am going up from one contour to the next to the next until I reach this point here, 40. Common sense will tell you that. If I start from this point and if I go to the center, I am going uphill. Why? Because I start from 10, 20, no figure here, 40, no figure there. But I'm going uphill because I'm going 10, 20, and then 40. The difference in height between one contour and the next must always be constant. If the interval or if the difference is 10, then what do you think the value of this line will be? It will be 30, yes. And I know it is 30 because I know that as I'm going up, the figure or the difference must be constant. It cannot be 30 or then 35. Then if I go 35, I'm breaking that consistency. Finally, the difference between the heights of each contour, the difference that I have just actually worked out here, is known as the contour interval. So if the question wants you to find the contour interval of this map, what would be your answer? What is the contour interval of this map? What is your answer? Um, my answer will be 30. Your answer will be 30. She's given us the answer as 30. Do we agree with her from what I have explained? No. So would someone like to give us what the correct answer will be? Silo. The question is, what is the contour interval of this particular map? Um, the contour interval would be 10. 10 what? 10 meters. Good. Always remember the unit, because I told you earlier on that when we are looking at contours, it will always be in meters. So the contour interval of this particular map is 10 meters. That tells me that for every line I go up, I will go up by 10. Or for every line I come down, I will come down by 10. And the difference is always constant. You cannot change it. If you know the contour interval of your map, you can work out what the next line is going to be if there is no value given, like in the case of this one here. And if I ask you to find the value of the center of this particular map, then you will know already, because the interval is going up by 10, then the middle part here, the value will be 50 meters. We're looking at the same information now from the monitor. Going over again what I have just looked at. A contour usually has a number to indicate the height of the land on that contour. So we have a 50 meter, 100 meters, 150 meters, of which all of those shows the height of the land above sea level. Two places on the same contour are at the same height. So say, for example, this point and this point, they are both on the same contour. So therefore, both of them will have a value of 50 meters. Both of them are 50 meters above sea level. A place which falls halfway between two contours will have a height about halfway between the height of the contours above it and below it. So if we know the value of the contour below and above, we can work out what the value will be for the place between the two contours. The difference in height or heights between contours is always constant, and the difference between the heights of the contour is known as the contour interval. To find the height of a contour, all you need to do is you follow it right around until you find a number. So if I have to find the height of this place, then I follow this right around until I come to a number, then I know that's the value for that particular contour or height. And 
if I don't, or if I cannot do that, because it might be a bit difficult if you look at your topographic maps there, sometimes it becomes very difficult because the contour lines are so close together, then what I can do is I look for the value of the contour above or below it, and then I can work out what the value of this particular contour is going to be. And finally, the contour interval will always be the difference in height between the contours. Okay, having looked at that information, is there anyone with any questions before you get to do the exercises or activities? Any questions? No? Okay, let's see if you've understood what we have um, or what I have explained here. Your exercise here will be on the chart here. If you can see from the monitor, that's the same thing that I've put on the chart. And the exercises are, you study the map given. First question, what is the contour interval of that map? Or it's the same here. You study this map here. What is the contour interval of this map? Question number two, what are the heights of the following a, you look for the number A, or oh sorry, not number, but letter A, B, C, D, and give their heights. For each one of those, you give the heights. And C, do some estimation. You estimate the heights of the places F, G, and H. So you can refer to the monitor, or you can refer to the chart for those activities. You can work on those now. I'll give you seven minutes. And then we'll go through the correction of those together in class.
we'll check the correction uh, to these activities and then we'll move on to looking at some more activities to do with interpreting contours. Okay, um, the first question simply asks for the contour interval of this map. What is the contour interval of this map? Renagi. Twenty-five meters. Okay, twenty-five meters. Do we agree with him that it is twenty-five meters? Yes, definitely. He knows that because as he's going up or coming down, he can see that there is a consistent interval of which he's following. So it is it is actually twenty-five meters. So you go twenty-five, fifty, then the next value here, then you come to hundred. Okay, so twenty-five meters. You check, make your corrections there. Question number two, what are the heights of the following places? We start off with A. Kiren, A, height of the place at A. This point here. 25 meters. Okay, 25 meters. We're happy with 25, everyone? Yes, that's correct. You follow the line right around you come to the value 25 25 is the answer the place b terence place b this point here 100 meters 100 meters is correct good our answer for b is 100 meters Let's look at place C. That's this point here. Ovio. Place C. Fifty meters. Okay, C fifty meters. That's correct. Good. And finally place D. Francis. Place D. This point here. Um, 25 meters. Sorry again. 25, 25 meters. meters is correct. Okay, good. You double check, everyone. 25 meters should be our answer. And finally, for the height of place E. And place E, Frank. Place E is at this point here. 75 meters. Okay, 75 meters. Good. If you look at our contours here, that is the only contour line that does not have any value. But if you had known the interval, you should be able to work out that this value here or this line here should have a value of 75 meters. Okay, do your corrections for that and then we move on. This time, you're estimating, estimating the heights for the letters F, G, and H. Shelley, Loma, can you tell me your estimation for the letter F? Thirty-seven point five meters. Okay. Would you like to also tell us how you got thirty-seven point five meters? Um, I divided. 25 into yeah I divided 20, 25 meters by 2 25 by 2 and you will end up getting 12.5 12.5 yeah meters so you're telling me you, this is 12.5 no I added 12.5 with 25 you I added 12.5 with 25 meters to and get 37.5 okay meters. so if you followed her method might be easier to say you adding 25 meters plus 50 meters and you divide by 2 because that's halfway in between and you'll end up with 37.5. So if you got your answer 37 or 36 meters, 37.5 or 38, I will accept that. You can give yourself a tick because I said to estimate. So there will be no one answer. Our estimation should be closer to the point. Okay, let's look at the letter H. LC, the letter H, give me your estimate for the value of point H. Uh, 
Uh, my estimation is 48 meters. Okay, if you had 48 meters, 47 meters or 46, I will also accept. Because if you look carefully at that point, it is not right in the middle now uh, to have it as 37.5. It is a little bit closer to the 50 contour value. So for those who had 46, 7 or 8, you can give yourself a, tech, a tick because we are estimating the value of this point here or this place. Okay, and finally, the letter G, Kathy. Estimate the value of the point G. Um, 63 meters. 63 meters. 63. Because we are estimating, her answer would still be about close and correct. And for those who thought that this was right in the middle between 75 and 50, you added 50 plus 75 and you divided by 2 to come up with an estimation of the letter G. Okay, so basically what we have done here is we have interpreted a very simple contour map to see if we can read the heights correctly. The next activity now that you are going to work with will be where the Sogeri maps are. You have the Sogeri map in front of you. And this time, using the skills that we have already learned in grid referencing, calculation of distance, directions and bearings, we are going to do some of those now using the topographic maps, mainly to do with interpretation of contours. So referring to that contour map, map of Sogeri, what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to study that map and I'd like you to tell me what is the contour interval of that map. That's question one. Can you make note of that quickly? Question number one. What is the contour interval of that map, the map of Sogeri? Question two. Using the map of Sogeri again, find the heights of the following places. Number one, 468, 558. 468, 558. You find the height of that following place using the six figure grid reference. 468, 558. Number two, 500573 Number three, four nine six, five seven eight, four nine six, five seven eight. Number four, five zero seven, five seven six, five zero And number five, so we'll do only five of those activities. Find the height of Beria Dabu, the place called Beria Dabu. You will find that on your topographic map. So those five activities, using the topographic map, I'd like you to see if you can complete. Don't forget, question number one is to find the contour interval of that map. And question number two, We'll want you to find the following areas using the six-figure grid reference and give the height using the contours. On your topographic map, there should be a leaflet which contains the keys or symbols. So you double check and you see if you can find a small extension that you should have for your maps and have it open so you can check on the keys and symbols also. Check for the key or the leaflet. Yeah, I'll repeat again the key or the leaflet here on your topographic map. You should be able to have that open so that you can make reference to it also. Put it 
on the table. And hold it open. That's it. That's how you read seven. And when you're working with those maps, use a pencil, please. Do not put any permanent ink mark on those um, maps. Use a pencil if you're going to mark anything so that it can be erased easily. Anyone got an answer for the first question, contour interval of that map? Um, yes, Gideon, Gideon will tell us what is your answer for the first question. Mic microphone down, please. Tw 20 meters. Okay, 20 meters. We check. Did you have to look for it from the map? Where did you find the information? Yeah, keys or symbols. Remember I taught you how to use a map? You must always look at the key or symbol first. And if you had looked at that information, it's given there. Well done. For those who went straight there, it says the contour interval of that map is 20 meters. If you wanted to prove that and if that information was not given, then you go and do what you have just done on looking at each of the lines and trying to work out by how much it is going up by and by how much it is coming down by. Double check on that one and see if you end up with 20 meters also. Find a value, find a value, any value on your map, which means any number on your map. You do that quickly. Okay, from that value that you found, you check by how much is it going up by and by how much it, is it coming down by. You will find that for every line, you're going up by 20 meters or coming down by 20 meters. Were you able to find that? Yes? Okay, good. We move on then to the next question. And for the next question, since time has caught up with us, I'd like you to do the first two only, one and two, and the rest you can do for your homework. Just do one and two, we'll correct, and then the rest you can do for your homework. Anyone found the answer for the grid reference 466558? The height? Yes? Who's found an answer? Val? Okay, Val will tell us what she's got. The rest of you, you check. The grid reference is 468558. And what was the height you came up with? 604 meters. 604 meters. Everyone double check. 604? Yes, definitely. You should end up with 604 meters. So here it's the point. If you look carefully at your map, you'll find a triangle representing that height 604 given. And for that, you didn't have to calculate the interval because it is a spot height. That means it's the highest point in there. And usually for spots, uh, spot height, the information will be given to tell you the height of that particular area. It's 604. Okay, good. Let's look at the second 
Exercise 500573. 500573. Anyone found the answer? Lucky found the answer? Okay, Lucky's found the answer. Uh, my answer is 480. 400 and? 80. 80 what? Meters. Okay, very good. You double check. 500573, you should end up with 480 meters because you will find that value right on the contour line that you've been asked to find from that grid reference. Okay, so the answer is 480 meters. See how difficult it gets when you have a topographic map? And especially where an area is very mountainous, you will find that the contour lines are so close together. But if you can interpret, then you will be able to read a topographic map, no problem. OK, I'll stop here, because we are also to the end of our lesson. And the remainder of the activities, number three, number four, number five, and number six, you are required to do that for your homework. Make note of um, number six also to give the height of Mariani and complete those for homework. We'll check on those tomorrow. OK, class, before, we, or before I conclude the lesson, just double check very quickly now on what we have covered in our lesson today. Contours are lines on a map that joins places of the same height above sea level. Contours, they show us three things. They show us the height. And that's what we have been working with today. Contours shows us relief, and that's the difference in height of the land. Contours will also show us land form, and later on, when we get to do calculation of gradients and recognizing contour patterns, then we will look at slope and the shape of the land. Those are the three things contours are supposed to show us. Interpreting what we have looked at today mainly on height, we find that any numbers that are shown on contour lines, they represent the value of that particular contour, which means it represents the height above sea level of that area. Any place that are found on the same contour line are places with the same height above sea level. A place that is found between two contour lines will have a value between the contour line above it and below it. To find the height of a contour or the value of a contour, you follow that line right around until you come to a number or a value. Then you know the height of that particular contour. If you don't or if you cannot follow the contour right around because the contours might be very close together, like what you have on the Sogeri map, then what you can do is you check the value of the contour above it and below it and then you can work out what the value of that line will be. Note the difference in height between contours is always constant. And finally, the difference between height, the heights of each contour is known as the contour interval. We'll go ahead with more practice on contours in our lesson tomorrow. OK, class, if you can now stand up. Okay, to the pilot teachers, our key word for today is contours. If you can add that to your checklist. Good afternoon and thank you, students.